दुखे उपकार करे तो मन अभिमान आणी रे वैष्णव जन तो तेने कही जे पीड़ पराई जानी रे so thinking about gandhi ji the first thing that comes to my mind is the question how much or what exactly do i know about gandhi this kind of a dilemma i'm sure many of our younger people are faced with being an indian i know very little about my country and about gandhi ji who has been the most important figure in our history in our modern history i'm afraid i know very little or none mahatma gandhi was born on october 2 18 69 when he finished his education in india he went to england to study law when he returned he practiced lawyer's profession both in india and africa when gandhi returned to india he worked hard to get indian independence he bore the hardship of prison life and fostered wingly in order to bring about his great work he continued to work for hindu muslim unity even after independence was won lagu pati raga raga ram pati tapavan sita ram ishwar allah tere naam sab ko samvati de bhagwan ishwar allah tere naam sab ko samvati de bhagwan I am a man of faith. My reliance is solely on God. One step is enough for me. The next step he will make clear to me when the time for it comes. For the post independence generation of this country to which I also belong, I feel that Gandhi ji is more a part of history now. He is more or less a legendary figure and nothing else. We today as such do not know as to what gandhi ji's philosophies were in fact and the way we are seeing the elders of the nation today practicing gandhism in the form of fast hunger strikes and all that okay. we the youth of the country are today shocked that if this is what gandhi ji was teaching to them well gandhi ji gandhism has no relevance for us today the present youth has grown without the presence of mahatma gandhi and unfortunately his ideas have not come down to us in a proper fashion and he still remains a distant figure for us more to be adored than to be followed i should like to say that there are so many politicians who don't actually live up to the gandhian principles in spite of the fact that they wear go about wearing a gandhi cap and khaki clothes in their heart of hearts they don't really believe that those principles are applicable neither do they practice them so i mean politi- politicians should play should cause such havoc in the country by putting forward their ideas and where so politicians should be honest in their dealings honesty was one of the policies of gandhi ji it is not a term applied in our daily life for instance state ministers they were the great followers of gandhi gandhi ji and uh, they have taken a uh, good post set in the government but uh, still uh, they are taking bribes and all and i don't think that is uh, honest and they are not at all honest to us a country as gandhi ji is presented to us by the so called gandhians i don't think he appeals to us very much because they are trying to sort of defy him make him a little god and if they succeed in doing it i am afraid the historical person of gandhi ji will be forgotten and he will end up in a pantheon of gods in a dark corner Service can have no meaning unless one takes pleasure in it. When it is done for show or for fear of public opinion, it stunts the man and crushes his spirit. Are uh, Gandhian principles applicable today? 
I don't think uh, Gandhiji's ideas about individual non-violence are very applicable. He said if anybody slaps you on the left cheek, you should put forward your right cheek. I don't agree to it. Uh, uh, this individual non-violence is only applicable to this extent that you do not go and hurt anybody. But if anybody does hurt you, I don't think it is very sensible just to stand over there and uh, tell him that you go on hitting me. I don't agree to Gandhiji's idea at all and I don't think it is very applicable. Well, I feel Gandhiji's policy of non-violence is not at all applicable today, especially for India. Look, we are surrounded on all sides by big powers like China and everyone knows, it's no secret that they've got weapons, nuclear weapons. And any moment they may swoop down on India and destroy us. So it's very foolish not to have weapons and still sit and say, oh, we'll be non-violent, we will be non-violent, we shall not have nuclear weapons and all that. India has the capacity to produce it and she must if she wants to be an integral nation. And of course, you know, China is very unreliable. All of a sudden they came and attacked us quite some time ago. And you may never know when they'll do it again. So I feel India should not stick to this policy of non-violence. They should produce nuclear weapons. They should start arming themselves and they should start protecting themselves properly. I am an uncompromising opponent of violent methods, even to serve the noblest of causes. Well, Gandhiji laid great emphasis on discipline, which we really aren't practicing now. Take for example the student unrest. It has really caused a great havoc in the country. And actually, you know, this is a time when we really ought to be disciplined, because only now we can really make a good progress. The strikes and all, the cause I think is Gandhiji, he only told us, he only taught us how to go on strike, he only to, taught us how to um, disobey, go and disobey the uh, law and the disord, disobedience and all that. So he hasn't helped us much by teaching that Satyagraha, though he might have helped us in getting the freedom, but the present generation is taking the wrong view of it. As some people think that Gandhiji started the strikes, and that's why now the people were following. But they, they do not realize that Gandhiji did for a good purpose and there was some cause behind it. Whereas nowadays they are abusing this cause. When we today talk about violence in India, we always find that the youth are somehow involved in violence. There's always a pertinent question. How far can we ask these youth or control the youth and make them to divert their energy to more constructive purposes? For me, I feel, I believe that Gandhi has probably an answer to it. He, during his career, during his life, developed a keen sense of mental inner discipline. And that's what we lack today. 
And if somehow in the institutions, or in all institutions, say from school, colleges, and probably in academic administration like this, we can induct an inner sense of mental discipline, which ultimately means the control of the mental impulses, I am sure that we are finding a solution to the youth problem, by the violence. If we are to reach real peace in this world, we shall have to begin with children. I believe in Gandhiji's teaching because first of all, he was reverent to God. And I as a scout, uh, believe in God and respect God. Ga Gandhiji uh, served his country and I also uh, serve my country and I want to serve even. And Ga Gandhi used to help other people and I as a scout try and help other people at all times. Gandhiji always believed in the brotherhood of man and in scouting also we do the same thing and there is no system of caste. We treat everybody equally. I joined guiding because I wanted to follow the principles of it. The principles of guiding are based on the law and promise and the promise is such. On my honor, I promise to do my best, to do my duty to God and my country, to help other people at all times and to obey the guide law. By following this promise, I automatically follow the teaching set up by Gandhiji. When a guide promises that she will do her best on her honor, she means that she will be truthful and trusted by others. This is also what Gandhiji meant. We are all the members of the Rovers group, known as the Hyderabad East Rovers group. We have been doing a lots, of, lots of social service since the past five years and our service secretary will tell you more about it. I feel that it's one thing to talk about social service here and to go and do social service in practice. For example, we have to convince the villagers that what we are doing in the villages is for their own good. That is, I think, one of the insurmountable difficulties. <laughs> गांव सभा अपने में से कुछ आदमियों की एक कमेटी चुनती है जिसे गांव पंचायत कहते हैं यह काय की तस्वीर है हां जिस चीज की यह तस्वीर बनी है उसी चीज का नाम नीचे लिखा है यह नीचे लिखा है हल हल में दो आवाजें हैं पहली आवाज हां दूसरी आवाज ला यह क्या लिखा है हमारी आजादी के बाद जो बच्चे पैदा हुए वे आज गांव के नवयुवक गांधी जी के बारे में जानना चाहते हैं यह बात शहर के नवयुवकों के लिए कुछ हद तक सच नहीं हो सकती सरल गांधी साहित्य की नवयुवक साक्षरों में काफी मांग है The most in important aspect of post-independent society is that we are moving away from spiritualism towards materialism. And Gandhi's ideal of self-sacrifice is no more there. We People trying to indulge in luxury than self-sacrifice. And Gandhi's ideas are exploited towards achieving their own aim. Nobody really believes in self-sacrifice anymore. Gandhiji was more or less a spiritualist a believer in spiritual values. But to the youth of today, uh, speak of India or of the world, I don't think such moral values, rather abstract and vague moral values, have any appeal. Uh, by youth, I don't mean youth uh, studying in universities, in colleges and universities. I mean that section of the people. I mean a youth who are in the rural areas who don't even get a square meal a day, because that's the majority of youth in India. What's the, what does spiritual uh, values like truth and non-violence mean to them? I admit that the strong will rob the weak and that it is a sin to be weak. I, as one of those who were born around the year 1947, consider Gandhi to be one of the most strong moral forces ever recorded in history. I for one differ from him on his views on industrialization, economic system and his style of political activity. If the seven lakhs of the villages of India were to be kept alive and if peace, 
that is at the root of all civilization is to be achieved, we have to make the spinning wheel the center of all handicrafts. True economics stands for social justice. It promotes the good of all. Machinery has its place. It has come to stay. But it must not be allowed to displace necessary human labor. We like to look at Gandhiji as a historical person, a human being, just like any one of us, who shared our weaknesses, who made mistakes, but at the same time he rose up above the ordinary level through self-sacrifice, through discipline, and uh, a great love and devotion to freedom. The virtue of an ideal consists in its boundlessness. Man lago mura, man lago mura, yaar pakiri me, man lago mura, yaar pakiri me, man lago, man lago mura, yaar pakiri me, man lago mura, yaar pakiri me, man lago mura. पाओ राम भजन में जो सुख पाओ राम भजन में सो सुख नहीं अमीरी में सो सुख नहीं अमीरी में ए मन 